Welcome back to Inside Story. We're talking about the millennial generation. And joining us now are Erica Williams, a social impact strategist with EWS Strategies. She's a former appointed member of the World Economic Forum's Global Agenda Council on Social Media. In San Francisco, Ben Berkowitz, CEO and founder of cclickfix.com. And from Austin, Texas, Norman Horn, a professional engineer and blogger at libertarianchristians.com. Eric, I want to start with you. We're coming off of the government shutdown, everything that the, the dysfunction in Washington, did that change your view, or were you already skeptical of government as an institution? It didn't change my view. It's actually very expected. Um, you know, being a millennial, we've come up in a time where many of the institutions that our parents believed in and that actually supported them in their growth and their development have really failed, or at least significantly broken for us. Public education, the government, even many religious institutions. So there's kind of this natural skepticism of how government works, how many institutions in our country and society actually work. That said, research has shown that millennials still believe in their ability to change these institutions, and so it's not a complete abandonment, it's just the sense that there's, there are dramatic changes that are desperately needed. Norman, I see you shaking your head. First of all, explain why, and also what exactly are libertarian Christians? Well, first of all, I would agree uh, very much with Erica that government is completely and utterly uh, it's, it's completely and just utterly useless at this point to us. We've seen it break down so much in the past few years, especially with regards to the shutdown even, and yet we're seeing how non-essential it is to our daily lives. Um, and likewise, Libertarian Christians is a project of mine to really begin to talk to the, the Christian churches throughout the nation and really throughout the world about what a Christian should think about the role of government in our lives, what sorts of theological implications. So Norman, you're challenging the institutions of both government and church, but I want to challenge you on the assumption that government is utterly useless. I mean, it was government, the military that, for example, killed Osama bin Laden. It's the government that makes sure that the water is safe to drink, the food is safe to eat. Um, am I wrong? Well, so many of the government's institutions within it uh, can be operated perfectly legitimately through marketplace forces, for one thing. Um, but also, even, even those things that do seem essential uh, are often done completely irresponsibly and with wanton, uh, with wanton disregard for often for human life. And it also, of course, is supported uh, through the looted taxpayer, um, through the coercion of resources through taxation, and without people's permission for the most part. Ben, I want to ask you in San Francisco about the, your experience with institutions and whether you share this view. Yeah, you know, I've been working at the local level for the last six years, and uh, well, we've seen municipal crises, uh, budget crises for the last six years, uh, most dramatically starting in 2007. Uh, what, what we've also seen is citizens getting much more actively involved. Um, well, well, I think they're really frustrated with government. Uh, it's not, it's not uh, being presented with apathy. Uh, and on the other side, I, I have seen a lot of uh, um, encouraging response from local governments and willingness to to change the way we do business and to to really think about how we move forward as a country. And then on the local level, you have a fascinating project, cclickfix.com, essentially enables people to take pictures of things, potholes or signs or that are broken or stoplights that are out and actually send that directly to a local municipal government and have it fixed. Explain what that does and, and how does this fit into it at all? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, we started C Click Fix because we were having trouble communicating with our local government back home in New Haven. Uh, and it, being able to create these small transactions between citizens and their neighbors and their governments, and then being able to see a real feedback loop when the issue gets fixed, uh, really breaks down some of these barriers that we're experiencing uh, with connecting with local governments. I'm not sure that we're ready to have that experience yet with the federal government. I don't think we know really where the friction points are between citizens and the federal government. I think certainly we got very close this week to finding out. Uh, most people would be very aware uh, uh, if the federal government went into default, uh, uh, all the people on food stamps, as an example, would, would suddenly have that experience uh, that I had when we started See Click Fix, what, uh, when we couldn't get potholes uh, fixed in the street or, or graffiti removed from a, from a building. But this local effort, and Eric, I wonder if, as far as the institution of philanthropy is concerned, is that also where you see things going in terms of philanthropy being much more on the local and community level than at a larger institutional level? 
I'm actually seeing both. Certainly for philanthropy and kind of this new trend of micro philanthropy with young people joining with their neighbors and their friends online and off to kind of invest um, in programs and causes that they can see an immediate local impact, that is certainly a trend. That said, we do know that young people actually still believe, and research shows Harvard Institute of Politics came out with a poll um, earlier this year that said while 47% of young people and young Americans no longer believe that government and politics um, are able to quickly and immediately solve their problems, they actually still do believe in their ability and the necessity of their, their work to actually change that. This is the yes we can, the future planet generation that really believes there's nothing that we can't fix and solve. And so whether that happens inside, you know, it is, is, is up for debate. I think a lot of people are doing exactly what Ben is doing, which is finding ways to create and innovate um, and bring solutions to government. And then also at a later date, I believe, well, more will enter the government. Norman, as far as your situation in Austin, Texas, so I wonder if there are limitations to what you can do, what changes can be made when you're focused, say, strictly on your local parish or your local church, when you have an institution like the Vatican and the Pope that is essentially dictating certain policies towards the church. Well, even the Catholic Church has what's called the principle of subsidiarity, where they actually kind of keep the steel off the principle says that they want problems to be solved at the most local level possible. So when you do have issues of, uh, of poverty and of, of a, and of despair at a local level, these are things that churches, local congregations, can often work together and help solve. My church, for instance, here in town, has, operates with a, with a number of other congregations of differing denominations, in, uh, including uh, both Methodists, uh, Presbyterians, etc., to, to do a local, uh, basically, food bank. And it's called the Micah 6 Project. We have done this for years with very little government assistance whatsoever. And these are the types of things that when people and individuals and churches and, and the small businesses, whoever, are allowed to band together and create solutions on their own, they end up doing much better, much more efficient work than what the government is able to do. Well, and, and to that point, I mean, the fact that all the work that you're doing there on the local level, I can see why that reinforces your view that local solutions are much better than, uh, than say, federal government solutions. But Eric, absolutely. to the point about, aren't there certain limitations? I mean, a local government cannot go and protect national security or cannot necessarily go and provide for the common defense. Absolutely, and I think what we see with millennials, and I'm a perfect example of that, is that it's not either or. I'm a member of a small local church. I will die for my church. I love it. I've maintained membership my entire life, and we certainly um, are very effective in administering local aid and ministering to a very local community. That said, I have spent my career engaging with the government and helping young people all across this country figure out how the government and many other institutions can help them live out their purpose and really affect dramatic change not just on a national level but also on an international level and then do you think it's fair to assume then therefore that for most millennials there is this view of well the government is going to exist and there's going to be a certain role for the government to play but to really make change it's got to happen on a local level or for really to make changes say in local business you have to do the sort of thing that you're doing where you're interacting starting with municipal government absolutely i think I think we're not looking at the eradication of the federal government or anybody that you know believes that it uh, it should not exist. I think we're looking at a civic reset. Essentially, we're saying that uh, we haven't been participating enough as as a nation, uh, as, you know, globally as well. Uh, and and it's time to get more involved uh, to help out to not just show up at the voting booth every two or four years, but to really participate in new ways. And of course. You know, uh, this, these kind of community efforts have been happening through organizations and through churches, but you know, through the democratization of the internet, I think we're seeing it at a much more personal uh, uh, level as well. And that, that's when you start to see neighbors coming out and saying, you know, we can we can fund uh, a new dog park together or improve this improve this bus stop together. Uh, but that's, just to be that's clear, something that really didn't happen before. Just to be clear, if the federal government comes to you and says, hey, look at all these federal buildings, we want to be able to use C-Click Fix <clears throat> as far as enabling people to notify us, you're not going to turn down that contract, right? Oh, absolutely not. And many of those federal buildings are, are uh, very important. We would, we would obviously love to help <laughs> okay. that work. We're going to uh, have Ben and Norman and Erica stick around. And uh, when we come back, we're going to take a look ahead to the future and talk more about how millennial Americans may change our country in the decades ahead. This is Inside Story.